Last week, we arrived in Morgan City, Louisiana. It's a great little town with lots of friendly people. We got to stretch our legs getting food, doing laundry, and buying fuel. We also were able to get some big projects done, including our stack pack, while waiting out a couple of storms before continuing on the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway and on to New Orleans. Previously on Spoon Drifter, we spent three years in a boatyard bringing our 40-year-old hurricane-damaged sailboat back to life. Todd, I, and four of our 10 kids knew nothing about boats when we started, but with time, we have repowered, re-rigged, and turned this boat into a home that's ready for the next big adventure, before we sail to Florida and leave the U.S. for bluer waters. He's a little protective. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to chase you, isn't he? <laughs> We're in Morgan City, and we got some weather coming in. So since we figured we would hole up here for a weekish or so-ish, we're going to get a couple projects done. we got a list of things we gotta, yeah. we got to finish and get some parts for. Right? Yeah, we've got a couple of small hatches that need to be rebed. We've got lots of laundry that needs to be done. We need to do grocery shopping. We're gonna try and get our sale packs done. Right. Yeah, those are like our big things. Those are our big things. So, can we do it? I don't know. Let's do it. All Let's right. Let's get it done. Let's go. We first have to go get some more parts. Which means these two little legs that aren't doing much around here these days are gonna to have to work a little harder for this week. These two? <laughs> Mine are longer than yours. Yes, they are. <laughs> and there's the town of Morgan City. So, we think there's a hardware store over here. <clears throat> All right, did we get what we needed? We did. We did. So, who was this again? Thank you to uh, Steel's Marine and Custom Upholstery here in Morgan City. He hooked us up with all the parts we need. Didn't complain about the fact that we were doing it ourselves. Nope. Really nice people. Yep. We now have it. We've got it. We had half of what we needed, but we were short. So that's what you get when you're kind of designing right. on the fly and you're not quite sure what you need. <laughs> that's what I am, short. See, look at the height difference right here. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I mean... on a slope. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to tell them that. <laughs> Walmart was only a mile away, so the whole family came. Abigail even brought Susitna, who was only kind of happy to join us. This grocery haul was almost $500. <laughs> oh, 30 of that was cat litter, and like 26 of it was toilet paper. And eggs, 18 eggs, cost us almost $10. So, Prices are crazy right now. Think you're gonna be hot hauling this I home? Think so. <laughs> you tired, Liberty? <laughs> you're almost there. Can you get Bring it over here, Liberty. When we're just motoring day after day after day, sometimes it's really nice to have the junk food to make the day go a little faster. It is, it's kind of hard, you know, it's it's like you're up there with nothing to do, so you tend to be one of those, I have, I'm bored, I'm eating. We walked past the lo close laundromat that was only a half a mile from the boat yesterday on our trip to Walmart and it was closed. So we were like, no problem. There is another place on the other side of town, which is also where Todd needs to go to buy a part that he ordered in. It's the part for the generator? Yeah. For the generator. Of course it's for the generator. Yeah, it's a long ways away. 
we'll just get a Lyft driver. And an hour and a half later, they still couldn't find us a driver. So we tried Uber, they couldn't find one either. So we were walking. It's a 45 minute walk one way if we're going fast enough, then it's probably gonna take us an hour because I'm not super fast. This is boat life. We could have sailed here faster. <laughs> Who was that? Michael. Michael Loop. From, he works for the city and he brought us home uh, from our laundry excursion, gave us a ride in his car. He brought us some Cajun venison sausage made with cane syrup from locally here, which is pretty awesome. That is so cool. People are so, so nice. Way cool. Thanks, Michael. After that two and a half mile walk to the laundry, we did the laundry. We started walking back and we stopped at Eastgate Barbecue. Oh my gosh. Amazing yumminess. Really good if you're around here and looking for a good barbecue. They did a great job. But Michael overheard us talking about our walk to the laundry with the waitress and offered to bring us home. That was so nice. Thank you so much. People are just good. People are just good. Thank you. Look at how much that sucker's moving. And these waves aren't that big. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crud. Okay. I don't know where these things have come from, but I'm a little concerned that we might be uh, in the movie Arachnophobia. Check this out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is hundreds of cobwebs in our rigging, and they're hanging like 10 feet past them in the breeze. And every time I walk by, I get it all in my hair and on my shoulders. And you know, that's okay. I just wanna know where the heck are the spiders that made it? Where are they? I was just following along with the sail right video, doing it step by step. Todd thinks that the organization of that video was stupid. He thinks we should have drawn all the lines and done all the folds before we started sewing. Well, all the lines are coming off of the same edge, but now I have multiple folds over here and I'm still trying to do straight lines on this edge that is now not straight. Well, it's only not straight because I'm not good at sewing. No, I think that anybody sewing it, there's going to be imperfections that it creates as you're going. When you stretch it out up there, you don't really see it, but it makes it harder to draw a line on it. Hand me that bag. Come up the mast. And here's the danger coming. See the wake ripples? When they hit my boat, it's going to start moving. I'm very confused. What? I'm confused about what you're doing. I'm trying to run both of them at the same time so that I don't have to pull the second one up. backwards, but I don't know that it matters right now, does it? All right, are we ready for this storm? I hope so. We'll see what we've done. Sure. Right here. Oh, it's starting to rain. So we've got the main line up there. I added that as a secondary. And then it goes back to a spring. So we've got a spring going up to there, a spring going back to there. This is our chafe point. That's what we gotta be careful of. And two fenders. We've got two fenders on each pole. Two, two fenders on each post. Um, I added this line here to the back. It, does, it doesn't really do anything. 
unless these break free it just keeps the boat close enough to the dock to get back off of it and then of course we got this guy and we added our mantis snubber um, spring line emergency <laughs> storm tie off because I didn't have anything long enough to get to that other piling over there. So what are we expecting? Well, it could be upwards of 50 something knots, theoretically. We're hoping it skits past us and we only get the 35 to 40, <laughs> right dear? Yeah. But, so we kind of got our stack packs are kind of up. Well, the stack packs are up, but the laser jacks aren't. Yeah. Well, and they're not finished yet either because we still got to cut the PVC off and we still got a little bit more work to do them, but they're kind of dry fitted right now. And they look pretty good, don't they? We're supposed to have up to 40 knot gusts. But right now it looks pretty awesome. Flat, pretty mist on the water. Here it comes. We got off-road diesel and ethanol-free gasoline for the dinghy. So we figured out we are doing about 0.4 of a gallon an hour. Is that right? I don't know. I'll ask Todd. Basically, we're doing really good on the generator fuel. It's doing better than we thought. We were going to try and leave, but the wind and the water is still really rough. So we're going to wait one more day and let that calm down from that big storm last night. But it has left the water and the wind really unsettled today. All right, so what is the diesel using? Four tenths of a gallon per hour. Okay. So just under half. So in a 10 hour day, we're using four gallons. Roughly. Seems about right. We ended up being here 10 days and want to say a special thank you to Lisa and Charlie for welcoming us into their home and running us around town, Velma and her husband for picking us up for church and bringing us lunch, and Jim and Carrie for bringing us Amazon packages to help us complete our projects. Thank you guys so much. All right, goodbye Morgan City. Little choppy and windy. Okay, give me my green jacket. From the back for bedroom. the bridge. Wait for this cable ferry to cross and for his cable to drop. Let's see it's safe. He's got a little blinky light. Well, we are spinning circles waiting for a lock. Yeah. Uh, how long have we been here? Oh, I don't know. I didn't look at my watch. I didn't think it was going to be very long. <laughs> Keep it in the middle. <laughs> I don't want to bump the side. My best. Five knots. Thank you. We don't have to. Florida. Okay. All right. You'll be safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Weird, right? It's kind of a strange looking setup right there. Look, it can totally uh, has the like it can't just drive right out of the water. Yeah. It's the Hotel Rustifornia. Shipyard. In case you actually own a helicopter, you could land on that guy. 
Okay, we're waiting on the bridge. We called them, they said they could open to us real easy, except there's an accident on the bridge. And so now they can't open. And we have a half hour until the curfew, which says they can't open for an hour and a half. So if they don't get that accident cleared in the next 25 minutes, we have to wait here for another hour and a half after that. That sucks. Which is dark. Yeah. Which sucks. It's got a bad sliver. There, I think it's coming. Is it coming? Got it. Well, we were docking on this dock. It's a nice dock, but it's got splinters. We're in Homa. And the cat's off her leash. Yeah. Why is the cat off her leash? Holy moly. That's a big one. He's got a nice park. Denali likes to go down the slide. <laughs> so, they say it's shallow here. What's the depth? 1.3 feet. Three feet under the keel. Here's a toe. Right there. And he's got a six pack. Which means he has six of those guys. He's double wide, three long. That's how close he is to our boat. It might be a little loud here tonight. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Goodbye, Huma. Nice little town, very narrow waterway. <coughs> All right, it's not quite as cold as it was yesterday. The sun is really bright. So, but I, it always annoys me when sailors don't take their sunglasses off when they're talking to the camera. <laughs> now I can't see a dang thing. <laughs> but anyway. So we I understand that. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my sunglasses on. It is a beautiful morning and we have 37 miles to an anchorage called Mile 15. That's 15 miles from the Huma Lock. From there, tomorrow will be a 27 mile day, which isn't very much except that we have two locks and five bridges. And sometimes there can be a delay. We're going through on the weekend so that we don't have curfews. That's my understanding, is that we don't have curfews on the weekend. So that will make our bridges more accessible. We won't have times that they're closed down for traffic. So yeah, that is our schedule. So tomorrow we should be through New Orleans. That puts us four days from Pensacola. Tomorrow through New Orleans? Yeah, tomorrow through New Orleans. Todd's like, I'm the navigator. Todd just drives the boat. <laughs> He's like, where are we? <laughs> um, yeah, so that is super exciting. We're not stopping in New Orleans um, other than to anchor overnight. We might have two days there. The weather seems to be yeah, changeable. Yeah, we're not going to travel on, on Sunday because we're supposed to get like an inch and a quarter of rain yeah. through the day, which heavy, heavy rain makes it hard to see. And why travel in it if you don't have to, right? Right. 
do you say it? C E N A C. Todd says yeah. snake. <laughs> well, that's what it sounds like they're saying on the radio. Snack bin. Snake bin. Snack bin. Snack bin. <laughs> they may speak English around here, but it definitely sounds different. Maybe it's snack. So they go snack bin. Snack bin. <laughs> that's a big thumb. Somebody needs to talk to somebody about their parking jobs over here. <laughs> and this is this is just part of it. You come back here, man, they're wedged in there too. That looks like trash, but it is somebody's marker for a crab pot. We are seeing them up and down this section like soda pop bottles, empty antifreeze bottles, just trash that floats. Todd's over, heading over to meet somebody to get a package. We are anchored. <laughs> it's a long day. It's beautiful. It would be really nice if we weren't running our generator to charge our batteries because we were down to 54% had a lot of current for the last two and a half hours. Like we were flying, and then we weren't. <laughs> Which is just kind of life on a boat, on a sailboat. Even more on an electric boat. So, big lake out there. We came from this direction into here. We are tucked into this corner. We don't drink, so my sundowner is a Coke. A little, little bit of caffeine and some sugar. At the end of a kind of stressful day, we were really worried about getting into here, and I was just always a little sketchy, like when you're not real sure about an anchorage. There was two anchorages. There's one over in that lake, and then this one are both listed. Both had their pros and cons, but our friends that went through here two months ago said this was the better choice, so here we are. <laughs>